Socks of I, it's great to be with you today. Thank but, you, everybody. Great. Can we put our hands together for the worship team? Vâng, xong tay đây. Ở cùng đã cầm thoại bằng cùng đôi vai yến. Miền kia miền ông nói sáu bài để kia nơi tin chỉ mua ở lùng để bông phô đồng ở kia. It's so good to be here with you again this morning. Cứ chưa cao lo để kia miền miền vật ở miền nơi tin chỉ mua ở lùng để bông phô đồng ở kia được bật For those who haven't met me before, I've been coming to your wonderful country for the last 24 years. And in that time, I have many good friends like Pastor Mara. <laughs> One of the great privileges of my life is to be a friend of New Life Fellowship in Cambodia. The greatest privilege of my life is to be married to Lynn for 40 years. Can you welcome her? Very good. It's a long time, isn't it? <laughs> she needs to be rewarded for persevering with me. Another great privilege of my life is to lead the Stairway Church in Melbourne, Australia. Our church has uh, fallen in love with the nation of Cambodia. And it's our great pleasure to be able to serve New Life Fellowship and other churches here in Cambodia. Over this last week, uh, members of our worship team have been serving your worship team for the last week. And it's been amazing. The other one is the tall, bald man in the uh, back there. <laughs> I can say that because he's my very good friend, Duffy. So it's great to be here with you. We're going to continue to have a good morning in the house of God. As followers of Jesus, we're learning how to live in the kingdom of God. So let's read from Acts chapter 1 verse 3. After Jesus had died and rose again from the dead, he spent 40 days before he went back to heaven here on earth. In those 40 days, he talked to the disciples about how to live in the kingdom of God. Jesus had a lot to say to his disciples about how to live in the kingdom of God because it took nearly six weeks. And so this morning I just want to look at one aspect of what it is to live in the kingdom of God. To do that, we're going to read many verses from the Bible today. We're going to do that because Jesus is the Word of God. And if we're going to learn to live in his kingdom, then we need to read his word all the time. So let's have some fun reading the word of God together. Amen. You can do better than that. Amen. Amen. 
That's great. <laughs> okay, Galatians chapter 5, verse 13. So Paul is talking to the Galatian church and saying that they are to, through love, serve one another. Let's read Ephesians 4 verse 2. So Paul says to the Ephesian church that they are to show tolerance for one another in love. Let's read Romans chapter 12 and verse 10. Now Paul is talking to the people in Rome and saying that they are to be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Colossians chapter 3 verse 13. Now Paul is talking to the people of God in Colossia and he's saying, bear with one another and forgive each other. Let's turn to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 11. Now Paul is talking to the church in Thessalonica and he says, therefore encourage one another and build up one another. So Paul talks to five different churches. And to all five churches, he talks about how they are to treat one another. In the New Testament, Paul says 59 times how to treat one another. One of Paul's great messages about how to live in the kingdom of God is how we live with one another. In the New Testament, Paul was very concerned that we would learn as followers of Jesus how to live with one another in his kingdom. We're to serve one another. We're to uh, tolerate one another in love. We're to, to be devoted to one another. We're to forgive one another. We're to encourage one another and build up one another. All the time, Paul is talking about how we live in community. We can't follow the one another's of the New Testament unless we live in community. Coming to church on Sundays is very good. Thank you for coming to listen to me. But 
But we learn to live with one another when we are in small groups with one another. We learn to live with one another in family groups. We learn to live with one another in friendship groups. We learn to live with one another in small groups. If we're going to follow Paul's instructions how to live with one another, we must find a group of people that we do this with. And when we live in God's kingdom, he wants us to value being in a small group where we can be all these things for one another. So why is it that it's so important that we learn how to be with one another and to live with one another? There are many reasons that we find in the New Testament. But today I just want to look at two. The first is in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 5. Paul is saying that the goal of his instruction is love. Everything that Paul was trying to teach about how to live in the kingdom came back to love. Paul was saying that the key to living well in the kingdom of God is learning how to receive God's love and to give that love away. In our worship this morning, many of us felt how much God loves us. But we have a responsibility once we've received that love to give it away to other people. So when Paul was instructing the people in Galatia and Thessalonica and Colossia, when he was instructing the people in Rome and other churches, his goal was always to help them to understand how to love well. We find that the Apostle John had the same idea. Let's turn to 1 John chapter 3 and verse 14. John is saying that we know we have passed from death into life. We know we've passed out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. We know we've been born again. How do we know these things? By our love for the brethren. The mark of a Christian in the New Testament church was how they loved one another. 
นี่ยนึ่งเชี่ยคริสบอลสักเนี่ยนึ่งเชี่ยนัดตามพวกอังกฤษก็อัดคือตามระยะกาได้เกิดขึ้นอังลุกเนี่ยมุ่งเจ้สลายขึ้นยึดตัวคนเดียว People knew followers of Jesus because of their love for one another เกิดดังท่านเนี่ยนึ่งปัจจุบันตามพวกอังกฤษสักเกิดดังท่านเนี่ยนึ่งเจ้สลายขึ้นยึดตัวคนเดียวมา When they looked at Christians they saw a love that they didn't see anywhere else in the Roman Empire เมื่อได้เกิดเมื่อตะการเนี่ยดาตามประยุทธ์สกิลเนี่ยได้เชื่อพวกอังกฤษจะคริสเตียนนึงเกิดขึ้นอย่างเนี่ยนึ่งมีสกิลสลายได้เกิดมันได้เกิดสกิลสลายนึกกันลายเส้นที่สอง In Luke chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, we read the story of Zacchaeus. In the book of Luke, chapter 19, He had to climb up in a tree so he could see above tall people like me. God, God, the long damn chair. Go down, God, the upper long damn chair. Don't make him look poor. Don't you come jump? He wanted to climb. He so wanted to see Jesus that he climbed up in a tree, and everybody saw that he was making a spectacle of himself. Look, net bong bong. Cứ quật tiệp quật trong lang đam chơ đang bay mơ khơi bể. Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus saw him in the tree and said, "Zacchaeus, let's go and have dinner at your house." Jesus That all the other people hated. Look, net bomb on in a penny. Pray Jesus Christ, man, how is that? Now, so come, then move this up, that he. As followers of Jesus, we are to reach out in love to our enemies. Look, net bomb on, can't let them get that damn wrong. Young, they're chung chap, chow the gun, net na. They're no cry, so come, give them the tool, squat, they give them man, put on the Christ alive. And so Jesus came and had dinner with Zacchaeus in his house. Wrong. And then Jesus said in Luke chapter uh, 19, verse 9, Today salvation has come to this household. How did Jesus know that Zacchaeus had been saved? They weren't sitting around the dinner table, and Jesus said, "Let's everybody close our eyes and raise your hand if you want to follow me." That is a good thing. That's how I came to faith. I was in a meeting like this over th nearly 40 years ago, and somebody gave me the opportunity to meet Jesus as my Lord and Savior. I raised my hand in response. I went forward and I prayed, and I became a follower of Jesus. And as I've never regretted it since that day. This morning, if you are here with us and you are not a follower of Jesus, at the end of our meeting, Mara will ask you, "Do you want to follow him?" And I encourage you, decide to follow Jesus. Oh, look, net bomb on. On top of it, can't stop, stop, grab on to the job. But in this story about Zacchaeus, that is not how they knew that he would be. He had be, he'd been saved. He came to salvation. Jung Penang, cứ kia đăng tờ biếp đại lược sạc khê ở ở ở trên đa tam phong đại đại biếp lược đại đại chẳng ở thế. What was it that Jesus saw that told him? That Zacchaeus had been saved. What Jesus saw was an act of love from Zacchaeus towards all of those that he'd stolen money from. Look, net bomb on. Away that Zacchaeus man, 
Zacchaeus said to Jesus, All that I have taken wrongly from these people, I will now return it to them. It was an act of love. And the New Testament, the mark of followers of Jesus was how they loved one another. So the next question we need to answer this morning is why is love so important? So let's turn to John chapter 13. And we're going to read verses 34 and 35. Okay. So Jesus gave them a new commandment. It was new for them because they've never heard Jesus say this before. This was revelation to them. This was something that they had to listen to carefully. When we hear something new, it challenges something old that we already believe. Not only was it new, but it was a commandment. Jesus was not inviting them to discuss this with him. Jesus was not suggesting that they could have a conversation about it and decide whether they would or wouldn't do it. Jesus said, this is a commandment, I expect you to live like this. So not only is this new information that's challenging something old on the inside, but it's new information that they have no choice about if they are going to be true followers of Jesus. This new information caused them to have to reconsider what they knew of the Old Testament. Jesus was asked by a young man, what is the great commandment of the Old Testament, of the Bible, of the Jewish Scriptures? And Jesus answered that question by saying, here are the two great commandments, and if you follow them, you'll fulfill the law and the prophets. The first commandment was that we love God with everything, with our heart, our mind, our soul, and our strength. The, the second of the two great commandments of the Old Testament was to love God as we love ourselves. Or love your neighbor as you love yourself. But this new commandment that Jesus is telling his disciples challenges the second of the two great commandments from the Old Testament. The second commandment in the Old Testament was to love one another as you love yourself. Now Jesus is saying love one another as I have loved you. So 
So where in the Old Testament they used to measure how well they loved people by their behavior. Now in the New Testament we have a mirror called Jesus where we look at him and see am I loving people like he has loved me. This is why in the book of James he said that the word of God is like a mirror that we hold up in front of ourselves that is meant to reflect to us the way that God is calling us to live. So now as New Testament believers, we need to know how much God loves us so that we can love other people well. We can know how God loves us in our head, but we actually need to know how much he loves us in our heart. In Ephesians chapter 3 verse 19 It says to know the love of God which surpasses knowledge so that you might be filled up to the fullness of God. When we were worshipping Jesus together this morning, I could see that we all want to be filled up to the fullness of God. I believe that as a follower of Jesus, you want to be filled up to the fullness of God every moment of every day. Paul teaches us about how to be filled up with the fullness of God. Paul says that to be filled up with the fullness of God, we need to know the love of God which surpasses knowledge. The Greek word there to know means to know by experience and encounter. To know by experience and encounter in our heart that surpasses the knowledge in our head. Let me illustrate this with a story from my own life. Lynn and I planted Stairway Church in 1990. We'd been leading Stairway Church for nearly 15 years at the end of 2004. 2004, right? 2004. It was one of the larger churches in Australia. It was, a, it, was Australia, it was a church in Australia that had a reputation that was known by many. At the end of 2004, the Lord started to speak to me about the fear that was in my heart. He started to show me that I had a fear of rejection. That I had a fear of failure. He started to show me, even though I was leading this large church, that fear was in my heart. And in 1 John it says that perfect love casts out all fear. I knew in my head that God loved me. I had knowledge and understanding that God loved me. 
sang worship songs about the fact that God loved me. About God loving me. I had knowledge of the love of God in my head, but it wasn't strong enough to deal with the fear in my heart. I hadn't had a deep enough experience and encounter with the love of God in my heart to deal with the fear that was in there. And so I needed to go on a journey in my relationship with God where I asked him, God, reveal your love to my heart so that I would not be afraid of rejection and afraid of failure. And so if I'm to love people like Jesus loves me, I need to know deeply in my heart how he loves me. But there was a part of my heart that didn't know how much God loved me. And so I needed to position myself in prayer and in the Word and with the Spirit that I would have an encounter and experience with God's love. And so for the first six months of 2005, my prayer life and my walk with God was dominated by, God, please give me revelation that your love would change the fear that's inside. God has commanded us, He expects us to posture ourselves to receive His love so that we can give that love away. So when life happens to us and we don't give love away, it shows us that there's something in our heart that he needs to repair and heal. So if you find it difficult to love your enemies, then God wants to heal whatever is in your heart that stops you from loving your enemies. He doesn't want you to try harder. He wants you to have an experience with his love so that you would love them like he loves them. And if you find it difficult to love people who criticize you, then God wants to give you something in your heart where you would know his love for you so that you could give that love to those who criticize you. When you squeeze a lemon, you get lemon juice. When you squeeze an orange, you get orange juice. When life squeezes a Christian, you should get Jesus juice. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That's a good one. Thank you. <laughs> when you're when you're squeezed by betrayal, what comes out of you? 
kia chụp bát dương cho môi nâng cao các bạn nô ta vì chân bị dương chứ ấy tới lúc này mong phôn when you're squeezed by criticism what comes out of you ta nâng bê lê kê rí khôn nó lúc này mong phôn kê rí khôn sắp bạp sắp dàng ta chân bị lúc này mong phôn chứ ấy tới vì chê bất thích mấy mấy when you're squeezed by people who are angry with you what comes out of you chân nâng bê lê kê chụp bát lúc này mong phôn chụp môi nâng cao khăng mua mà bạp xanh xanh ta chân bị lúc này mong phôn chứ ấy tới when you're squeezed by people who disappoint you, what comes out of you? When we're filled up with the fullness of God, no matter what squeezes us, Jesus' juice will come out. So I, in June of 2005, went to be with some friends in New Zealand. They spent time praying with me. And in that time of prayer, I had an incredible encounter. I experienced in my heart how much Jesus loves me. And it dealt with that fear of failure and that fear of rejection. So when I now get squeezed by any signals of rejection coming to my life, I'm able to give them the love of God that I have received. And this is what Jesus expects of us. He expects us to deal with our brokenness so that his love can come out of us. And he asks us to posture ourselves in community with one another. When we're in community with one another, we find that we don't like everybody that we're with. We find that there are things about them that irritate us and at times we don't appreciate. But that's not their problem, it's my problem because I, when I'm squeezed, should be able to give them love. One of the greatest opportunities that we have as followers of Jesus is to be in small groups so that we can learn to be like him. That we can be in small groups where people pray for us and we can be open with them about our struggles so that Jesus can come in and heal us. Let's turn to John chapter 17 to see why this is so important. John seventeen verse twenty to twenty-one. Jesus prayed for us that we would learn to be one with one another. Jesus prayed for those that were with him and those that would believe through their word. 
We believe because the apostles and disciples passed the word on to one generation and the next generation and the next generation and it's come down through 2,000 years to us. So here Jesus is praying for us and we can be the answer to his prayer. We, we often want Jesus to answer our prayers, but here we can be an answer to his prayer. But we can be an answer to his prayer. He wants his prayer to be answered just like we want our prayers to be answered. So the answer to this prayer is that we would learn how to be one with one another and love one another. The, the answer to this prayer is that we would learn to live with one another through love and through servanthood and through forgiveness. I want to be an answer to Jesus' prayer. Does anybody else want to be an answer to Jesus' prayer? I love Jesus. I want to honor Jesus. I want to become like Jesus. I want to be a disciple of Jesus. I want to live, I want to live well in the kingdom of God. And one of the greatest keys to doing that is that we would experience the love of God in our hearts so that we can give it away to one another. And we give it away not just when we feel good, but we learn to experience love when we're squeezed by things then we don't want to love people. Loving one another is a really great idea. But sometimes it's really difficult. So let's learn how to love when it's difficult. In Genesis chapter 3, the devil turns up in the Garden of Eden. The devil's there because he challenged God and said, I can sit on your throne better than you can. The devil judged that he could rule heaven better than God was ruling heaven. So the devil lost that battle and got kicked out of heaven. But when he got kicked out, he took his judgment with him. And so when he comes into the garden, he comes in with judgment. He, he says to Adam and Eve, has God said? He wants Adam and Eve to judge God's word. The devil then got Eve to judge what God's motive was. The devil suggested that God was trying to hold something back from Adam and Eve. To judge that God wasn't as good as they had experienced him to be. 
And so Adam and Eve listened to that judgment and then ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And the tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a tree of judgment. It's a tree that says that you can judge between what is good and what is bad. And so they ate of the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The first thing they did was that they judged themselves that they were now naked. The second thing they did was that they judged God and said, we were afraid of you. And then the third, then the third thing they did was to judge one another and say, she made me do it. The kingdom of darkness is built on judgment. In Matthew chapter 7 verse 1, Jesus said, don't judge lest you be judged. The word judge there means to scatter. <laughs> so when we judge others, we scatter from them, we separate ourselves from them. But the kingdom of God is built on oneness where we're meant to gather to one another. One of the reasons why we find it difficult to love one another is because we're more familiar with judgment than we are with love. And so when we were born again, we came out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Because the kingdom of darkness is built on judgment, we learned how to judge and we have brought that with us into our relationship with Jesus. But now that we're in the kingdom of light, we're having to learn how to pursue oneness and how to pursue love. When we pursue oneness, we want to be close to one another and one with one another through love. But when we, but when we judge, we are eating from the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And when we judge, we push others away. We separate ourselves from them. This is why it's so challenging for us to be the answer to Jesus' prayer. So today as we come to a close, I want you to think about how much you judge other people. I want you to think about when you're squeezed by life, how much you judge other people. I want you want to ask you to consider that when you judge people, you're eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Look 
This morning, would you think about anyone that you are judging? This morning, would you think about asking the Holy Spirit to help you to experience His love for that person so that you can stop judging them and start drawing them close? ຫມົກບົມເປັ່ງດວງຈິດຂອງອົນລູກແນ່ບ່ອນ Let's all stand. Hallelujah. For those, just before we do, uh, Mara is going to finish the meeting. So for those who need translation, pop your earplugs in so you can hear what's going on. มนุษย์มีอารมณ์มีมนุษย์สัญจิตตนาให้มีการปะปอลบาสเนนามะเนญัยทั้งเฮมไม้ดิมีปะปอลไอ้ดิอดมีเอลิงมองปะไฮจี
พระใดประปนบาลกนะบองบองหนึ่งเมียนปิศาจทำไมมวยถ้าว้าวพระใดเคียมก็อาจามาเลยว้าวประปนยมไม่ก็อาจามาเลยฮาเลลูยาลูกนะบองบองเพลนี่ต่อไปลูกนะบองบองเชี่ยปนลือได้ปลื้มลูกนะบองบองหนึ่งมันดึงมันดูเจงปีลูกนะบองบองเตะแต่ลูกนะบองหนึ่งเอาก็สาวมันดูให้เกนังเมียนปีศาจทำไมได้ชีพปีศาจในสกายสลายระบบเปรียในนกโคทันสูได้เกมันได้เมียนปีศาจตัวแต่สาวอ๋อไม่ใช่ชีวิตนี้ฮาเลลูยาชีรารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารารา Oh, ra ba ba la 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 la. Hallelujah. Pray by the way. Tu bungkum sama akun pro. Prang tu bungkum tang akni. Som yeng pro. Cui bumping tu bungkum mana mana. Dambai tu bungkum mana mana ban slide top. Nai pek ati thana bot preja om aja Jesus Christ. Nai kerong prek kepi Yuhan jemput ti dok prapi. Prang ay. Tu bungkum sama akun pro. ตุบกุมสมประกาศท่าพระองค์คือจิตเปรียบตุบกุมต้องออกเนี่ยตุบกุมสมประกาศท่าตุบกุมต้องออกเนี่ยนั่งกูรุบบ่มราตายพระองค์มาจากแต่มวยพระองค์กดแต่พนอพระองค์มาจากเอ้ยฮาเลลูยาพระองค์ตุบกุมสมรุมปังมวยดักการุมปังมวยตลอดพระองค์สมัยตุบกุมต้องออกเนี่ยมีนปิดสาวปีสิกรีสลายในกรุบเล็ดดำมอบพิบองสมัยตุบกุมใจกระดมเล็กสิกรีสลายฮาเลลูยาได้มอบพิพรองได้มนุษย์ได้นจุมวิญญาณพระองค์ตุบังคุมสมอคุณพระองค์ตุบังคุมประกาศท่าสัปดาห์ขมุกนี่เชี่ยสัปดาห์มวยได้เนตได้ตายสกอลพระองค์สอบเชี่ยเนตได้สกอลพระองค์เปรียบเปรียบเกินหนึ่งเมียนพิพสลัดสนาลเชี่ยมวยหนึ่งพระองค์เกินหนึ่งเมียนพิสาวทำไมตุบังคุมสมยิ่งพระองค์ได้กาคาเปียพนอลโป้พนอลกำลังดาวลุกในบางคนต้องออกเนี่ยต้องออกเนี่ยขนงเปิดนิยมพระมิจฉาพระเยซูคริสต์เอเมนฮาเลลูยาสมพระองค์ประเทียนโป้ลุกในบางบาทสัญญาตรากาคาอธิฐานเซ็งเซ็งเนี่ยนักน้องระบายยังกวาดเตรียมครูนำไปช่วยอธิฐานสำหรับลุกในบางคนสมเตยจมูกนึงกำลังตุ่มนกจัดได้มาพิพรองเอเมน thank you so